I think the way we go about managing climate very much is, is, is similar across all these things. So that's some of the stuff I'm going to talk about today. Um, and uh, to, 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 uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to relate it to the Upper North experience. And, and I, I, when I'm doing these things, I do tend to sort of use my own farm as a, as a bit of a case study. I'll try not to do it any more than I have to, but I think we can bring stuff out of that out of your own farm and, 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 and do whatever. So, so I've, got a, I've got a little farm over at um, Port Germain. It's, it's a farm that was taken up by my great-grandfather in 1878. And so we've, we've, um, we've been farming there for, well, I don't know, 130, 40 years. And, and we've survived in a pretty marginal sort of country. And we've sort of built up, I think, skills in doing that. Um, as, as Kim said, I, I joined the... I went to Rose with, with, with Kim and then joined the Commonwealth Development Bank for a while. And since about, uh, I don't know, 15 years ago, I, I got out of the banking game and went full-time farming. And then I've tended to, I guess looking for something else, I tended to drift into this area of of, um, I guess, climate risk management. That was originally what I was employed for to, to, to do about three years ago within Rural Solutions. Rural Solutions is a particularly interesting beast in that it was a, it was a, it's a government-owned consultancy firm that grew out of the Department of Agriculture here in South Australia when they, when they sort of looked to, to stop f uh, doing public funding of agronomy-type work. They set up this, this organisation to, uh, to basically be a, a consultancy firm but publicly owned. And so mo most of the work we do is um, sort of project-based stuff. We get a you know, fair bit of funding out of GRDC and, and uh, various other forms. And so since, since I, I, I took on this role within Rural Solutions on a part-time basis to try to sort of look at climate risk management in the upper north and see if we could further it a bit, but I've actually done very little work on it because there's been so much demand in other areas and also a bit of a lack of funding. But just at the moment, I'm actually getting reasonable funding across the board to, to, to uh, take some of this stuff further. So that's so I'm going to I'm just going to sort of run through some stuff and I'm I'm just encourage you to hit me at any time with any questions and you know let's have a sort of a bit of a discussion about that because I want to try to draw on your experiences and your thoughts on this. All right. Now hang on, that's not right. We'll go to that one there. No, we won't. Right. Um, so this is a graph. Doesn't show up very well actually, it shows it much better on my computer. So here we are. This is where I farm at Port Germain. It's a big dot, it's the centre of the universe, so it's got quite a large dot. And we're at Aru, which is not quite the centre of the universe, but that's all right. And we talked about Gorda's line, and this is this Gorda's line that runs around. So, yeah, certainly where I farm is outside Gorda's line, and most of the area that we're dealing with is, is sitting outside that line of reliable rainfall that, that this quite a clever man called Gorda observed. observed in about 1868. Um, now, just specifically looking at that area of, that, that we're involved in here in the Upper North, there's really two, and I was saying this on the bus, there's really two areas, quite significantly different areas. It's all sort of less than about uh, 350 millimetres rainfall, the areas that we deal with in terms of this Upper North sort of um, farming system stuff. But we've got an area over here which is, so I farm up here at the top, and I always seem to farm on the boundaries. I always find the boundaries to farm on. That's the dry boundary, of course, up there. They stop farming about here somewhere. So there's an area here which, again, somewhere between 300, 350 millimetres, but it's actually quite different because it's, it's, it's sitting out over here alongside Spencer's Gulf. It's a long way inland. We don't get a lot of rain because we've got this big air peninsula out here that shelters us, but we've actually got a really moderated climate by this gulf. So quite light soils and, and quite... Um, yeah, quite, quite mild temperatures and haven't got a frost risk and so there's a, there's a particular set of circumstances that drive our management in that area. And we've got another area here in the upper north which is this area here, Walla Walla or Araru being, being there. And that area there is a similar sort of rainfall again, 300, 350 millimetres. And it varies obviously today we went down into this area that was up to 400, 450. It's, a much, it's, it's generally a, a higher plateau, it's much colder, it's got a much bigger frost risk and the soils tend to be a lot heavier. So again, our farming systems that work here and there tend to be a little bit different and we work across those zones. Any questions on that, on that just the actual location that we're, like, that we're here? And of course, any, any farming, any, any management of climate risk very much takes into account that stuff. Um, I could use any 
any schedule of rainfall across any of the recording districts. I just happen to pull out the ones for Port Germain. And you can see it jumps around all over the place, as it does anywhere in Australia. Um, this figure, this here is the, is the average, about 329, 329 millimetres at Port Germain. And it, but there's no pattern. I mean, it just, it's just variable. If we look at growing season rainfall, again, no pattern. We go through some really dry periods. You can see the last, there's this two years there, that's 2006, 2007. You look at this period back here, this is the one that I really find interesting. This period here from about 1925 to 1929, there's five years. And these actual figures, rainfall figures don't show as badly as the one I've got, ones I've got for our own farm, which is 10 kilometres north of here. And there was five years there, we would not have grown a grain. Well, very few grains. And we can still see the legacy of that in the landscape. Even today, there's, there's, just, there's, there's areas that got destroyed environmentally in those times and, and we still don't farm them. My great-uncle great, great committed suicide in 1928 as, as a farmer. And you can really imagine why. It would have been a terrible time to be farming. So, so, you know, we've had these times over the years, but then we go back in here to the 80s and 70s. It was a great time. There's a period here from about 1955 through about 1965. It would be a great time to be farming. So, so you know, yeah, it's variable. And, and again, like I say, this the last 10 years or so has been a bit dodgy, but whatever. So, so we, we've developed, developed um, mechanisms to try to manage that. There's been a, a growth industry in, 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 in people with computer models yep. that have uh, shown the last five or six years and saying it's, it's heading downwards and it's just going to keep on going downwards until we run out of and the world's going to burn with crisp and it's into it. The reality is that if it goes on down, the further it goes down, the bloody weather it's going to get, isn't it, when it does come back? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, when, when we look at the, trend, the trends for, for this area, I mean, there's certainly there's been some pretty concerning trends in south eastern Australia. Oh, yeah. and the South Eastern Climate Initiative sort of shows that. And, and if you go to the northwest of Australia, it's sort of tending to rise. But we're, and we're basically somewhere in between on that transect. We, we're really, there's really no evidence of any great change in our rainfall in this area. Not that I've seen, anyhow. Um, Alright, so what does all this mean? What does all this mean to, well firstly crop yields, obviously we jump around a fair bit, this is just a, a, a stuff I pulled out of my own records, we've got two farms, one in a bit better area and one in a bit poorer area, and yeah, they, they move around all over the place, so that's, that's, that's normal, we, we, we have a lot of variation. Um, but the interesting thing I think a bit is around what it has, what impact that has on our profit, on our business profit. And this is a graph, I just pulled this just straight out of my financial statements. And we're not a very big farming operation, we're only, we farm 4,000 acres in pretty marginal country, so whatever. But this is just a graph of operating profit as defined by basically, you know, income minus expenses minus depreciation. So it's operating profit. It doesn't allow a management figure and doesn't allow any interest. It's just operating profit from the farm. And you can see what it does. It jumps around a lot. So we've got these periods here, which are pretty ordinary. There's a period there from about 03 or 04 through to 07. But we get these peaks. And if I go back over the last 30 years, I can identify about six peaks that, since I've been involved in farming. And those peaks are just absolutely critical to our survival. These times here, you can't do anything about those. you just got to buckle down and survive. There's two things I reckon that's really interesting about this though. One is, and, and, and this, this just comes straight out of financial statements, right? So there's, there's no change of inventories or anything like that from a, in a financial context. So, but at no time during that period have we dropped below the red line. No time have we dropped into a red zone, which I think is really interesting, even in this really marginal country. And in, not in, in, in 2002, we produced 80 tonnes of wheat. Well, it didn't even pay air. Didn't even pay our, I don't know, didn't even pay our fuel bill, let alone anything else. And yet we still have enough, enough resilience in the system to sort of stay above those, those lines where we don't, we don't completely drop off the planet. So that's, I think that's one thing that's really interesting about it. The other thing that's really interesting about these sorts of systems is there's absolutely no point in looking at this on an annual basis. Um, on an annual basis. You know, we, we, we go to the bank manager and, and the bank manager says, what sort of a year did you have this year, Barry? I said, oh, it's terrible. I, I, I earned $20,000. I might as well go on to Roxby. 
But there's no point in thinking like that, and we do tend to think like that. We've got to think longer term. We've got to think sort of maybe you know, five years, ten years sort of time frame. So, you know, we, we go, we, we, so a lot of this, I think, is around almost mental resilience rather than yeah. we've just got to think this stuff through a little bit more. And that's the way we have to farm in these environments. Don't think about it annually. Think about it five years, ten years. Eric, can I just ask you a question like... Um say in terms of return on an asset or something yep. like that, like, like what's so important about it, or are you going to do that? I'll, I'll do that, I'll do that. I'll just do it in a, in a, in a really rubbery fashion, and I, I can get shot down in flames for this, but I've just drawn a trend line in there. That's a rough trend line. I'm pleased to say that 2010-11 is there going to be another nice, <laughs> nice peak. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's just a really rough trend line of that income. The average over the like, 14 year period, I think, was 100,000. But if we, if we put a figure here, I reckon it, it would come in around about, trend line, about 120,000. Now, we're talking about an operation that's worth maybe a million and a half dollars. That's our rough estimate of, what my, of, of, of our farming operation. So it's only, it's only a pretty modest farming operation. But let's do some sums on that. 120,000. So, and it's a one man labour unit, basically. So if we value that one man labour unit at about, I'm saying 70, let's say, so 120 minus 70, the average net profit, which is basically allowing for depreciation, allowing for owner's labour or management or whatever you want to call it, would be about 50,000. million and a half assets, so that's about a 3% return on capital. Now if you look historically across Australia, I think the numbers, now someone might be able to tell me, I think it's 1.7, it's about that, that figure out average return on capital across agriculture in, South Australia, in Australia. So, so I'm not saying 3% is very good, we've been through some pretty rough times in the last 10 years, I'm not saying 3% is very good, but what I am saying is that I think prima facie that this, this system is not unviable. Very unreliable, yes, absolutely unreliable, but not necessarily unviable. It's about the systems we have to employ to make it capable of working. That's really what the, what, what the debate is all about. So, yeah, I, I, and I find this really interesting when we talk to the policy people about this. And I say, yeah, look, you can call me unreliable all you like. Don't call me unviable, though. I don't think I am unviable. But, yeah, that's just a, a, a debate that I have regularly with some people. So the question of viability in that situation, you take that 7,000 off for management, yep. labour we're going to call it, is, is, is he going to debt, is it? Absolutely. So that business with no debt is viable, that yep. business with uh, a significant debt, so half a million dollar yep. debt yep. is unviable. That's right. And that's, and I'll, I'll go on to that as I discussed, as, as we you know, look at some of the process that we use to try to manage that. Now, is it really interesting, so what our group is in, in, involved in, we're talking about, you know, we're talking about farming in, 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 in an environment of, 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 of a changing climate. Now, yep. And you're saying, that, okay, that's what you've been doing for the last hundred years. Yep. And, and, and so what? It's just business as usual and we've just got to keep on going through it. Yeah, yeah. And I'll, 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 I mean, I'll make a few no, points about that as I go along, Bill. Not exactly what you're saying, yep. but it's, it's sort of the, what I'm saying. Yep. Yeah. What, what I'm saying is you have, we have to have... We have to be very um, open to change in this sort of process and, and, and rec recognise the process and then work with that process. I guess... Oh, sorry. So, so what, I, what I'm hearing is, OK, don't, don't look, if you look at that, a snapshot of that business that yep. you're looking at, at times it'll look, it'll look like a disaster. Terrible, you absolutely it? terrible. You look at it over 10 years, 20 years minimum to yep. say... Is that what yep, you're absolutely, absolutely. And what, what I'm saying, and what I'll bring out as I go further, I hope, is that these peaks here are probably, to me, and I've, and I've always thought these peaks here are the absolute uh, driver of these systems. We have to have these peaks as high as we can. This, it doesn't, there's nothing you can do in this time. These, that's just batten down the hatches and ride them out. That's just the way it is. These peaks here are absolutely important. I'll just go back and, I, and I'll, I'll refer to it later on. But you can see here, we had a really good peak in 1908, 2009. That's actually... Um, we go back to our growing season rainfall. That actually occurred as a result of 2007. You see our rainfall in 2007. Growing season rainfall in 2007 was about 110 millimetres. That peak occurred because of some decisions that were made to maximise that value there. And I'll, I'll talk about that as I go along. But it, it just, just shows that what we... The focus has to be right across the business, but those peaks are just absolutely critical to what we...